Well, shit. Oh, I just thought I'd, I'd uh, talk about the Super Bowl a little bit. Um, pretty depressing, honestly. I do like the Chiefs. I like, as I've said before, I like, I like Mahomes. I think Reed deserved a Super Bowl. It's been coming for a long time, but the 49ers, my 49ers, they had that game. They had the game. It's like my uh, my good friends Geezy and Maiko said. They're they're you know part of the Niners crew. They they said that uh, it was in, it was in our grasp and it was like a oily wet fish from Nolan Lake. It slipped out of our hands. It slipped out. I I mean I called it an implosion. I, I, uh, that's a little. <laughs> It's a little, a little much, perhaps. Um, but the play calling, as my friend Geezy pointed out, was really questionable. I mean, the, we we ran the ball over six six yards a carry. Most are in mean, twelve for fifty eight. Samuel three for fifty three. Tevin Coleman five for twenty eight, and then Garoppolo had a couple yards, you know, scrambling. You know, it's six and it's like six point four, I think. Let's see, what did I see? Yeah, it's about it's over six, six yards of rush. We could we couldn't we couldn't grind them out. Um, twenty one points in the last six minutes and thirteen seconds. We were up twenty to ten going into the fourth quarter. Mahomes started driving around the eight minute mark, seven minute mark. Hit. We we had Mahomes th- third and fifteen. Third and fifteen, okay. Been playing great D. He 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 uncorks a bomb. Tyreek finally slithers open, and uh, that uh, that was the beginning of the end right there. That was that was it. That was. I mean, am I gonna call it a bed shitting? I. It was a little bit of a bed shitting. A little bit of shit came out. It wasn't like a full, you know, get, get the. Get the sheets off. Get the get the quilts. You know, take it to the dry cleaners. Apologize profusely. Pay extra money to get it cleaned. It wasn't like that, but it was like a little shit, just a little bit of shit. You know, half. You know that we stopped the Chiefs. It, it's fourth down. They're gonna they're gonna kick. They're gonna punt it back, and inexplicably. We don't call time. We have three timeouts. We could have called timeout and had a minute forty six, try to get a field goal. Okay, it was tied to ten. It was tied ten ten. We could have. We could have called a timeout. I mean, we're playing the fucking Chiefs, man. It's gonna take some points to beat them. All right, you're not gonna incrementally, you know, work your way down the field and kick field goals, and think you're gonna beat the Chiefs. Like they've come back. Every, they've come back every single playoff game. They ended up averaging 39 points a game in the playoffs, okay, counting the Super Bowl. 39 points a game. They put points on the board. And I don't know, Shani, he made a few questionable decisions. That was one of them. Just call a timeout, man. I know, I, I think he didn't trust Jimmy. I mean, Jimmy was a little shaky, you know, in the first half. I get it. But, but call timeout. Let let him try to get a let him get a, at least get a field goal or something. I mean, you, you got I don't know. I mean, listen, I played a lot of Madden. That's where I'm getting this from. <laughs> I played a lot of Madden, all right. So I, I know I know more than the coach does. Okay, no, I mean, it was just weird. Call a fucking timeout. You have two timeouts left in a minute forty six. But no, didn't call a timeout. Then they get the ball with like 59 seconds left and all three timeouts, and they run the ball, and then they let the then they let the the clock keep running. They huddle, and then they like throw they throw a shitty pass. I don't. I don't and there was that pi too, that was weak. The offensive pi, but like it just was weird, man. And like just strange play calling. Um, Jimmy had some good drives. He played pretty well. In spots, um, he obviously had that initial interception that was that was pretty bad. Um, 
I think it led to three points. Um, but you know, he 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 rebounded and he played pretty well. He had some good throws. You know, um, I still don't understand why they insist on having these long dropbacks. Like he's great when he can just throw those little slants to, to Debo and and those quick outs to Kittle and those little uh, button hooks. I mean, he's just he's not a he's not he does not look comfortable with those long drop dropbacks. And um, the first, inter- the second interception was just desperation time. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna hold that against him. The the first one, however, take a sack, man. Just take a fucking sack. I think he was twenty for thirty one. You know, he he was playing really well, at, like the first three quarters, basically. Two hundred nineteen yards, one in, one TD, two interceptions. Mahomes, 26 for 42, 286, two touchdowns, two interceptions, nine rushes for 29 yards and a touchdown. That was the, the rushing by Mahomes was, was huge. I mean, that, that first TD he had was awesome. He had some great scrambles, um, had a little trouble containing them. And they, I really liked, well, I didn't like it, but it was clever the read option stuff they were doing was was a nice wrinkle. I don't know if they watched the Ravens game against the Niners, but that read option stuff was working and worked well. And they got some pretty clutch first downs, you know, like third and short first downs. And that play they ran, that fourth down play they ran down by the goal line, and they got the first touchdown. It was really cool. They had, you know, like four guys in the backfield. They all like kind of did this little pirouette. And shifted over, and it kind of confused the defense. And then the direct snapped it to the running back. I don't know, man. Oh, it's kind of all hit me right now. I think I. I mean, it's just a fucking football game, right? It's such. A, it's so fucking stupid. I mean, why? Why do I get emotionally invested in this shit? Ugh. Take a little sip of my beverage. <clears throat> Mm. Mostert ran the ball well, as I said. 12 for 58. You know, Tyreek, I didn't realize this. He was targeted 16 times. Nine receptions, 105 yards. And that, that 44-yarder, man, that's what did it. That broke the game open. And I think that kind of shook the Niners a bit. They were shook from, the, from that point on. Let's be real. 21 unanswered points. We were up 20 to 10 going in the fourth quarter. And we lose by, we lose 31 to 20. I mean, people were bringing up, you know, Shaney Jr.'s Atlanta meltdown. But as I was as I was talking in my in, in the Niners group chat, as we as we were talking about, I, I I mean, I don't know if that's fair. Michael said that he said, I don't know if it's fair just to say it's as bad as that. I don't think it's as bad as that. But shades of that for sure. I mean, it was. Um, it was rough. It was rough to watch that fourth quarter. It was frustrating, especially how well we'd be running the ball. <clears throat> and they kind of gave up on on those rushes to Debo, you know, and they gave up on those slants to Debo. They've been working so well. Um, I don't understand why they did that because Jimmy is so good on those little slants. And they just – and then Jimmy had a chance. He had multiple chances, but he had that chance at the end, that deep bomb – he missed Manny on. Um, I don't know. It's just unfortunate. But, um, yeah. That's basically it, man. Use check. Had a nice little game. Three for 39. Touchdown. Receiving fullback. Shades of William Floyd. Um, Jimmy spread the ball around quite a bit. I mean, you had... Shit, you had five receivers with over 36 yards, you know. I mean, again, the running game worked, you know. The running game worked well. We did not pound the rock enough. We should have just pounded that fucking rock in the four, in the fourth quarter and the third quarter. I think in an effort to, you know, have variety and catch them – Catch the Chiefs off guard. We threw the ball too much. We killed, you know, Jimmy was throwing the ball. I mean, of course, if we get that conversion, 
you know, on some of those third downs where you threw the ball and stopped the clock, then that's great. But we had been running so well. And our running playbook is so varied. And we have so many different types of runs that we could keep them off balance with. It was working. We're getting chunk gains, you know. And they did stop us at times on the in the run game. But we basically gave up on our greatest weapon, which is grinding them out with our with one of the best rush rushing offenses in the league after the Ravens. Um, man. <clears throat> so Mahomes gets his first Super Bowl. Maybe his only, probably one of many. Um, Andy Reid gets his first Super Bowl. You know, good for them. You know, it was in our fucking hands though, man. It was there. It was there for the taking. Like, the Niners looked dazed. Like, all the players, they looked completely shanty. They showed shanty. He looked like he was on some, he was on, he was high as shit or something. He looked, his eyes were red. Like, if he had been holding a joint, it would have been perfect. But he just coached a football game and lost and blew a lead and gave up 21 points in the last six minutes of the game. Uh, But he looked high. He looked uh, confused. I don't blame it all on him. He's been a great coach. We got a bright future. Our team is set up nicely. We have a lot of young players, you know, early in their contract. We can reload. We can get some, as Mike said, get some, you know, secondary help. You know, sorry, this is a somber podcast. Sorry about that. You know, but God damn. Maybe we can get some receiver help too. I mean, Debo looks great. He looks. He could be a number one for sure. Um, as Osbo Osbo pointed out, he could have, you know, a great fantasy season next year. Great fantasy season. I mean, if he gets the volume, if he, gets, if he keeps getting peppered with targets, keeps getting those little rushing, rush attempts, and you know, he had a nice little game. Um, Manny wasn't involved nearly enough. Um. Five targets, three catches, 38 yards. You know, Debo, nine targets, five for 39. Bourne, four targets, two for 42. Kittle did not get the ball enough, without a doubt. I mean, he had seven targets, four catches, 36 yards. I think he should have forced the ball more to Debo and Kittle. You know? Mahomes forced it to Tyreek. 16 targets, 9 for 105, like I said. You know, Sammy Watkins had a big game. 6 for five, six targets, 5 catches, 98 yards. Kelsey, 6 for 6, 43 and 1. Damian Williams, man. Heck of a game. 104 yards rushing. Had that big run to seal it. 29 yards receiving and a touchdown. Ah, fuck. God damn it, dude. Now it's over. Now they now the you know, that's it. It's the last game. It's a fun season though for the Niners. It's a fun season. Yeah. Guess that's it, you know. Um so yeah, next year Jimmy will be back. Got that big contract. I don't know what to think of him right now. I mean, he's obviously we got we gotta build around him. You know, he's a young guy, he's gonna get better. Um, he's got to just be a little more poised. He showed a lot of good signs. He he had some good plays. He had a solid game, you know, for the most part. He had a few mistakes, but, you know, he just, right now he's not the kind of guy who can, who can come back in that kind of game, I don't think. I mean, he he has, he has done it during the regular season, though. So, but like, he didn't really prove much in the playoffs, I got to be honest. Like, he was solid in, in the Super Bowl. Um, I mean, he's still the quarterback of the future, obviously, but we were expecting more. I mean, the blame falls on him. It falls on Shani. It falls on, you know, the defense, of course. Everyone takes equal blame, but it was just rough to watch, you know, because once you saw, once Mahomes, you know, cut it, cut it to three, then I was like, oh shit, because um, because the whole Niners team got tight, like Geezy said, they got tight, man. You know, I just, I popped my jaw at one point. I was like, 
clenching down so hard watching the game that like I opened my mouth and like it was like popping <laughs> bones popping because I was like Ugh. you know it was it was it was, it was anxious moments man um fuck man what a downer pod but yeah I just want to give my reaction and uh I have more of a I have a better view a longer view in the coming weeks be able to think back it's a hell of a season um you know I mean Jimmy's gonna make a stride I think he's gonna make big strides next year our running game is still gonna be great like like Michael said we're gonna have some issues with the Super Bowl hangover and, and and things of that nature but coaching's great I'm not sure if our D coordinator is gonna go somewhere it sounds like he might stay um a lot of the a lot of the head coaching vacancies have been taken, so been filled. So I don't know, man. It'd be nice to have him, him for another year, and uh, we'll see what happens, you know. But some gaudy rushing numbers. It was great seeing Mostert get that two twenty last week. And uh, fuck, it sucks to lose. Oh, it sucks to it sucks to lose. Really? Oh, oh, wow. It's a it's a novel thought. Some people like losing, I think. Huh? <laughs> no one likes to lose, obviously. But, um, man. Yeah, so I'm wearing my Vernon Davis, dusty old Vernon Davis jersey. Sweating a little bit. Not very breathable, got to say. Uh, he retired today as well. So, props to Vernon. Congratulations. You beast of a man. One of the best, like, deep ball tight ends I've ever seen in my life, honestly. He was he's pretty special, you know. He never, it felt like he never totally lived up to his potential, but he kind of did in a way. I mean, he had 13 touchdowns in 2009. That was a hell of a year. 965 yards, 78 receptions. He was durable. He was a great blocking tight end as well. He also had 13 in 2013, 850 yards. It was weird. Besides the 2009 and 2013 seasons where he had 13 TDs each, he didn't have more than seven any other year. And, you know, some of those years, the teams were so bad. I mean, God. He had three, four, two, 13, seven, six, five, 13, two touchdowns with uh, the 49ers. Uh, so yeah, he retires. Um, I was gifted this jersey. If I had to choose, I'd obviously pick Jerry, or uh, or Joe, or St- probably Steve. Honestly, he's my guy. What can I say? Can't quit him. Mahomes looked like Steve Young tonight, and some of those scrambles, man. Hmm. He is a slippery fish. That Mahomes, with a cannon arm. Although some of his throws look kind of wobbly, no? Tonight, I mean, they still they still got the job done. He's gonna probably get like multiple surgeries this off season with his kneecap and his ankle, and maybe he won't get surgery. I don't know, but what a season, man! He got hurt in the middle of it and came back. God damn it, though, the Niners. It was so close, man. God, crazy. 21 points in the last 6 minutes and 13 seconds? Are you fucking kidding me? God, see, I see that it's true. Shaney's going to be hearing about this a lot in the offseason. I feel bad. Like Mike Mike was saying, he felt, feels bad for Shanahan. Shanahan Jr. I feel bad for him, too. It sucks. But, um... Hopefully he'll correct some of those issues. I mean, it, as I said, shades of ATL Super Bowl. And they kept throwing the ball with Matt Ryan and Brady came back. But it wasn't that much of a deficit. But fucking hell. Man. Uh, cuts deep. Cuts deep. No, it, it's just a fucking game, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna cry. No, it's not that sad. It's sad though. It sucks. 
so close, man. You know, and that's the thing with the NFL. It's such a grind to get to the Super Bowl. It's the same thing with NBA, but NBA is a little different. It's like it doesn't seem as physically punishing, even though a lot of players are getting hurt. You know, Kevin Durant last year, Clay. Uh, in years past, you know, I think Steph was hurt before the playoffs started or something. I don't know, but I don't know why I'm focusing just on the Warriors. I mean, there's been other injuries. I think Blake Griffin got hurt before the playoffs multiple years. But um, I feel like it's just if you have a great team in the NBA, it's easier to get back to the finals for for whatever reason. You know, like the Warriors, um, the fucking Cleveland Cavaliers with, with LeBron, you know, Kobe Lakers with Shaq. Um, by the way, I'm gonna, I'll touch on Kobe in a second. Um, and... Um, it just seems harder, more physically demanding, and harder to come back the next year and years, years in the future. Cause so much shit can happen in the NFL. So, as I said, so many injuries, so much upheaval. Um, things can change so quickly. So, I hope they're going to be back sooner rather than later. But who the fuck knows, man? It could be a while. We'll see. Um, I definitely think there's a Super Bowl hangover coming. There's a lot of regrets guys are going to have, you know, I mean, even John Lynch was doing the timeout sign at the end of the first half. I'm sorry to harp on that, but like, come the fuck on, dude. Haven't you ever played Madden? (laughs) You call that timeout, get the ball back. You get the ball like at at your own 20, a minute 46, two touch, two, ah, I can't talk. Two timeouts. Even the fucking GM wanted to call a timeout. Shaney. Okay. But you know, we gotta move on. We gotta just fucking. You know, it it fucked over the Falcons, though, mentally. So we'll see what happens. But all in all, successful season. We we fucking shit the bed slightly at the end. But, you know, there's some silver linings. So, um, and finally, Kobe's passing. I'm a Suns fan. We battled Kobe time after time in the playoffs. You know, and he got the better of us in 2010. That was that was rough when uh, he shot an air ball. And, actually, no, it was like, I think it was a brick. Was it an air ball? And Meta World Peace came in, run our, te- run our tests, and laid it in to win that game. And then they went on to win the series. Anyways, um... So I never liked him, okay? And I've never been a fan. I've never liked him. He's like one of my least favorite players in the NBA. But obviously, man, I liked having him in the NBA. I mean, he was he was a villain. He was hilarious, you know. He was like such a over the top, you know, the the underbite is was so ridiculous. Um it was so tragic, honestly. It was it was crazy. Like I I got to be honest, though, I didn't have the same reaction as a lot of people, like, because I just never liked the guy, you know, so I felt bad that I didn't feel the same kind of grief. But I feel like if if you grew up in L.A. when he was there, it's something is just so hard for me to imagine. Like, I know if I grew up in L.A., I'd be a huge Kobe fan. Like, I would I'd be obsessed, you know, Um, all his, you know, volume shooting and bad percentages and stuff be damned. I would love the guy, you know, and I and I totally understand. I mean, he got there when he was 18, you know, he passed away prematurely when he was like 41. So, you know, he grew up in the city. Uh, There's some really touching tributes and great interviews with Lakers legends and, and fans and everything, including Flea of all people had some interesting things to say but he's pretty tight in it with the Lakers so I guess I shouldn't say of all people but um it was cool to see but we go over all the stats in the Kobe pod if you want to if you want to revisit that I was pretty harsh at times it was kind of like an open-ended pod where I was like well, maybe I'll do another one with Kobe maybe I will maybe I'll do you know take a look at his stats you know coming up here and and uh, we can do a retrospective but yeah, I never liked his personality, man. I just, and it was, he was always on the other side against the Suns, and, you know, he's just a fucking asshole, you know, but he was a, he was, he was our asshole, 
He was, <laughs> it sounds so fucking glib, but, um, no, I mean, I can't hide it. I'm not, I was never a fan. So it doesn't hit me the same way it hits a Lakers fan. Okay. Um, and all the tributes and everything I found to be kind of excessive. I feel bad. You know, I felt bad even thinking that, but I just, I was just kind of like, I really like, now they changed the rules of the All-Star game. Like, it doesn't make any fucking sense. Um, kind of bizarre, but, you know, it was touching. I I, I knew the Lakers fans loved Kobe, but I had no no idea they loved him this much. And I think it's, it's as I said, very touching and sweet. And um, I wish he was still here because he was really entertaining, hilarious. Um, and he was a, dude, let's be real. He put up some gaudy fucking numbers, man. He belongs in the gaudy Hall of Fame. All right. Um, as much as it pains me to say it, he belongs in the gaudy Hall of Fame. Hall of Fame, and he. I mean, he scored eighty-one points in a fucking game, dude. That's unreal, honestly. Like the way Dame Lillard right now is playing, like I feel like he could put up eighty-one. But God, Dame Lillard. The way, the way he pulls up from like 10 feet beyond the three-point line, all these 35-footers, it's not 10 feet, but you know what I mean. It's like, it's far, okay? <laughs> My brain's shutting down. I think I'm going to sign off. Um, but yeah, tough loss, gut punch, but bright bright things ahead for the Niners. So um, thanks for listening. Until next time.